We're here today as part of a consortium um, across the state. We are public health foundations, we are, we are um, health centers across the state that provide free assistance to people who are looking for information and enrolling in health care plans. Tell us about the Affordable Care Act. Well, you know, in t beginning in 2014, all, just about all people in the United States uh, that are above the federal poverty level are required by law to have insurance. And insurance is a very difficult thing for people to understand. So what we're doing is we're traveling around the state, we're educating consumers on the insurance that is available in their community, as well as helping them with free enrollment assistance. Affordable Care Act 101, basically. I'll be going uh, step by step uh, um, through the overall enrollment process and uh, letting people know what information they, they will need to know uh, in, in order to either get assistance or to find out uh, uh, what resources are available to them under the Act. Four, three, two, one. All right, what the Affordable Care Act means for you. What I'll be doing is going through uh, basic information, uh, the need to know information in regards to the Affordable Care Act, in addition to uh, uh, going through step by step uh, what an individual would need to know in order to seek assistance uh, uh, through the program. Uh, this information is brought to you by Navigators for Healthy Louisiana. Uh, I'm a certified navigator uh, for the health insurance marketplace. I'm also registered with the Department of Insurance in the state of Louisiana. Uh, that's to ensure that all of the information I'm providing is accurate and up to date. Uh, so we'll go ahead and get started. We'll begin with important dates. Uh, open enrollment began uh, November 15th, 2014, and will run through uh, February 15th of 2015. Uh, the first effective date for anyone who enrolled uh, prior uh, to the end of the year will be January 1st, 2015. All this means is that January 1st is the first um, day for any plan that a person chose, if they chose a plan through the marketplace, uh, to begin. Uh, however, if you choose a plan after January 1st, for example, and January 2nd we'll use, uh, your plan will not be effective until the first of the following month. So that would be February 1st. So again, even if you've already missed uh, enrollment or still have questions, uh, open enrollment will extend through to February 15th, meaning that you should not wait until the last day, but if you do uh, and you enroll and go through uh, the program February 15th, your coverage will begin if you pick a plan uh, March 1st uh, 2015. Now normally these are the dates that you would be able to enroll within. Uh, uh, enrolling outside of those dates uh, generally requires some sort of uh, what is called a, a special enrollment uh, period. Uh, you would have to qualify this uh, for this based on some of the criteria listed. Um, Keep in mind at the very bottom, uh, if you have a change in income, uh, the only way that would trigger a special enrollment, meaning you would be able to enroll at any point in the year, uh, regardless of uh, whether it was outside of enro open enrollment, uh, you have to have already enrolled, meaning that you're making a change to your, uh, your information as opposed to starting fresh. But any of these other items uh, will trigger what is called a special enrollment period. Uh, so primarily any sort of change in household size as with any uh, pr private insurance. So real briefly, I'm gonna go over as a whole what it does, uh, and then since some things are a little different for us here in Louisiana, I'm gonna, I'm gonna mention and highlight those items as well. Um, the Act, the Affordable Care Act, expands and improves both Medicaid and CHIP, uh, LA CHIP uh, for us here in Louisiana, uh, for states that opted to accept the Medicaid expansion. We, uh, however, did not. Originally under the Act, um, Medicaid expansion uh, was mandatory, meaning that all states were going to be required to expand Medicaid. Uh, however, the Supreme Court of the United States decided that it was uh, going to be optional, uh, so each state then had the option uh, as to whether or not they would expand Medicaid. Uh, our state opted not to, about half the states opted not to, and um, we were one of those states. Uh, for all intents and purposes right now, that just means that uh, how an individual or anyone in their household is determined eligible for Medicaid, uh, we operate under the, uh, the same rule set that we have, so we will continue to do so. Uh, creates a new office in the Center for Medicare Medicaid Services, the Medicare Medicaid uh, Coordination Office. This office just uh, serves to oversee um, and, and resolve any um, uh, coordination disputes between either Medicare or Medicaid, uh, for example, for some individuals who have a, a, a bit of both. Establishes the healthcare marketplace, which I will uh, in a moment go into more detail, but for right now it is designed uh, to be a one-stop shop where an individual uh, or their 
family can compare different plans and prices uh, for different, uh, from different in, uh, insurance providers uh, in addition to trying to see if they qualify for any assistance uh, to help pay for that, that private health coverage. Uh, and finally, it holds insurance companies accountable, and that's what I'm going to go into a little bit more detail on for right now. Uh, there are a lot of changes. A majority of the act uh, and the information in it actually uh, affects the insurance companies directly. Uh, for example, uh, the items listed, they can no longer deny an individual uh, or actually base an individual's uh, premium costs on any pre-existing medical conditions. Um, meaning that uh, for all intents and purposes, the plan's uh, prices are solely based on, um, for example, what your age is, uh, where you live, uh, in addition to whether or not you're looking for a household uh, family plan or just an individual plan. Uh, all of the plan information is online. Uh, every insurance provider is required to provide what is called a, um, a summary of benefits as a list of what the plan covers, the uh, out-of-pocket costs, for example. Um, all of this information is available either directly through the insurance provider's website uh, or it can be viewed through the Marketplace website, uh, www.healthcare.gov. Uh, I'll mention, uh, be mentioning that website throughout the presentation. Uh, no rescinding coverage. This means that insurance insurance providers can no longer, uh, for lack of a better phrase, uh, arbitrarily cancel or uh, uh, any sort of coverage that you may have. Uh, primarily if you're paying your premium and you remain in network on a health insurance plan, uh, you won't have any sort of loss. Uh, th there's, no, um, there's no way to generally lose your coverage as long as, as, long as you're um, doing what you're supposed to be doing. Uh, there are no longer any lifetime limits or annual limits on plans. Uh, prior to the act, insurance companies could put either a lifetime or an annual limit on basically what they would have to pay out on you over either the course of a year or the course of the lifetime of your policy. Meaning if they ever had to spend that much on you, uh, they could choose to no longer do so. Uh, this is no longer allowed. Uh, so for all intents and purposes, those items do not exist anymore. Um, there's a formal appeals process provided uh, through, uh, through, the, through the state if you have some sort of issue with your insurance uh, provider. Of course, um, work with them directly initially, um, but if you need some sort of third party to arbitrate, uh, uh, there is an appeals process for that. It establishes consumer assistance programs in the states, which for our purposes is uh, different navigator entities uh, who provide this information in addition to what are called certified application counselors. Uh, they provide one-on-one -on -one assistance um, as well. Uh, finally, they have to value what is called the 80-20 rule, um, meaning that you, know, you can think of it in one of two ways. Uh, the revenue uh, from premiums that a provider insurance company generates, uh, they have to spend at a minimum uh, 80% of what they generate has to be put back into the programs, has to be maybe refunded to the consumer uh, in the form of a rebate check or maybe a reduction in uh, uh, yearly, uh, next month's premium, something of that uh, manner. Or you can think of it like, uh, like this. They can only spend or they cannot spend any more than 20% of, of what they generate on administrative costs on paying themselves. This is a rule they now all have to abide by, uh, regardless of whether or not they're inside or outside of the marketplace. There are additional consumer protections for young adults. Um, uh, young adults uh, under the age of 26 can stay on their parents' plans uh, until they turn 26. At that point, they will age off and will have to seek some sort of coverage for themselves. Um, th this wasn't uh, given before. Some insurance providers uh, did use this age or one close to it, but now it's unified, meaning uh, all insurance providers have to cover young adults uh, on their parents' plans up to the age of 26. Uh, preventative services, it, it says they're free. In most cases, an individual uh, will still be paying uh, for their monthly premium, uh, but every plan uh, has to cover what are called preventative services. So for example, uh, your, your vaccinations, your flu shots, um, different cancer screenings, uh, well, well women visits, uh, all these things would fall under preventative. That's on an exhaustive list. Uh, you can actually go online uh, or, or contact an insurance provider uh, if you're currently with one or seeking one, and they can give you the list of preventative benefits. But every plan inside or outside of the marketplace has to cover these services. Uh, when, when you go seek and when you go, for example, you want to get your flu shot, you will just show your insurance card. You're not going to pay anything out of pocket. You don't have to meet your deductible. This comes with every plan regardless of, uh, of what type of plan uh, it is. And finally, real briefly, I'm going to mention uh, how it strengthens Medicare, uh, specifically how uh, the um, 
what's called the donut hole for prescription drug coverage uh, is an issue for quite a lot of people. Um, until that donut hole is closed under the act, uh, prices for prescription drug coverage uh, uh, payments will, will be reduced to compensate until the overall uh, donut hole is removed. If you have any Medicare related questions, uh, please contact the SHIP organization, the Senior Health Insurance uh, Information Program. Uh, we have their website listed here. Uh, in addition to their phone number, they're a national organization. Uh, so for example, if uh, someone in Louisiana, if we call, they will refer you uh, to a local resource. Uh, th this, is, uh, this is a way to get either one-on-one -on -one assistance or information or, or meet someone face to face if you need some assistance or have any questions in regards to uh, Medicare. So I'm gonna go into who is eligible, meaning who is eligible for the assistance uh, uh, that I mentioned. Uh, there are different uh, methods of assist or different ways you can qualify for assistance under the Affordable Care Act. And I'm gonna go through who, is, who can actually apply for them and receive them. You have to be a citizen of the United States or legally in the United States uh, during the coverage period for the insurance provider. You have to live in the insurance company service area for us. Uh, that means generally on a parish by parish basis. Some ins insurance providers in the marketplace are not available in every parish. Um, some of them are available throughout the state. Uh, that's something you'll be able to see uh, either through the website, healthcare.gov, or by contacting um, an insurance company directly. Uh, there's an income requirement. Uh, you have to have income in between what is called uh, uh, 100 to 400% of uh, the federal poverty level. Um, now I'll get into exactly what those numbers are, uh, but for right now, uh, it's just the uh, guidelines that the federal government uses uh, to determine um, what households and what individuals qualify for different programs uh, on a federal level. Um, and finally, if you're offered coverage at work, um, it has to not meet, has to fail to meet, I should say, uh, a certain uh, set of requirements. Uh, it has to be considered not affordable. Uh, so what the federal government has determined is that if what you're offered at work, uh, if you're offered employee-sponsored coverage, would cost more than 9.5% of your annual income at where you work, if your yearly premium would cost more than that, it is considered unaffordable and you would be able to apply for assistance uh, uh, in the marketplace. In addition to that, whatever plan they offer has to meet what is called a 60% actuarial value at a minimum. What that basically means is that at a minimum, whatever plan they offer you has to pay, uh, on, on average at a minimum, 60% of whatever your medical cost would be for the year. Uh, so no 50-50 no plans. Um, so, any of these criteria, as long as they're met, can be used to determine whether or not as a person is uh, eligible for assistance uh, through the health insurance marketplace. Uh, now I'm gonna get into who is not eligible, uh, meaning individuals who would not be eligible for any sort of assistance. Uh, anyone who is incarcerated, anyone whose income is above 400% of the FPL, what I mentioned, that federal poverty level, which I will explain uh, what those numbers are here shortly. Uh, if you're offered coverage at work that is uh, considered affordable and meets that 60% actuarial value, so for example, if it's less than the nine and a half percent, if you're eligible for Medicaid uh, or the CHIP, if you're claimed as a dependent on someone else's taxes, uh, if you're unable to attest residency in a single state, or if you're in the country unlawfully. Again, these are all, uh, anyone who would fall under any of these categories would not be eligible for any sort of assistance uh, through the health insurance marketplace. So, and I mentioned it briefly before, so what exactly is the marketplace? It is, again, designed to be a one-stop shop where um, individuals uh, and their households can compare different private insurance plans from different insurance companies um, in addition to being able to see if they qualify for any sort of assistance to help pay for that coverage. Um, so it, it would function just like any other insurance, uh, just in addition to being able to, instead of going to brokers back and forth, you're just going to, you're just going to one spot. Um, so for example, if you look at a plan, marketplace plan, and then you go directly to a different insurance provider, you're gonna be able to see the same plans, they're gonna be the same prices. The only difference is, in order to qualify for the assistance, you have to go uh, through the marketplace. And there are different ways to go through the marketplace to try to see what you qualify for, and I'll get into that here shortly as well. So I mentioned the assistance. Uh, there, there are a couple of different ways, a couple of different uh, benefits that an individual or their household can qualify for based on um, uh, generally their household makeup and uh, how many individuals in the household, for example, and the household income. Um, first is the advanced premium tax credit. Uh, this is, is 
determined based on your household size uh, and the, in the income of the household. Uh, for most individuals, that will be what is called modified adjusted gross income. So for most individuals, that is just their adjusted gross income. Um, if you qualify for a tax credit, you'll be shown a lump sum and it can be claimed at the end of the year, uh, just like any other tax credit. Uh, but this one's designed to be used in advance. Uh, if you were to enroll, you would give a projection of what you expect your next year's income to be, just an estimate. And based on that, if you uh, the, the marketplace will determine whether or not you qualify for any assistance, uh, first being the tax credit. If you qualify for it, again, they will show the lump sum, but you can also have it divided up essentially by 12 and paid in advance to the insurance company of your choice for the plan that you choose uh, if you choose one through the marketplace. So to give you an idea, um, say you apply and based on your household information, you qualify for a, we'll say a $200 a month tax credit, uh, meaning that every month, if you choose a plan in the marketplace, uh, you know, beginning uh, whenever you choose the plan, the uh, federal government will pay the first $200 of whatever plan you choose through the marketplace. Uh, they will pay that to the insurance provider. The insurance provider will bill you for the difference. Uh, so for example, I said a $200 a month tax credit. That's just an example. If you're looking at a $300 a month plan, uh, $200 goes to the insurance provider. Insurance provider bills you for the difference. You would pay your $100 a month premium. Uh, so you're still getting a $300 a month plan. You're just paying less out of pocket. Uh, in addition to the tax credit, which can be applied to any plan in the marketplace, uh, household or uh, anyone in the household can qualify for what is called reduced cost sharing benefits. Um, I'll go into a little bit more detail here in a moment, but to put it shortly, it is uh, designed to uh, reduce the out-of-pocket costs on a certain selection of plans. So whenever you go to use your health insurance, uh, what you would pay out-of-pocket will be reduced um, based on whether or not you qualify for this. So that would be your deductible, your um, out-of-pocket maximum, um, your copay, co-insurance. Uh, so for example, you, you may, instead of having to pay a, a $45 copay to visit your, your doctor, you may only pay 20 or something like that. Uh, it varies depending on household, and you'll, you would uh, get this information uh, after you applied, but before you actually choose any plans if you choose to do so. Uh, one thing to keep in mind, once you accept a subsidy, you must file a tax return for that year. Uh, the reason being that when you apply, again, you're giving a projection of what you expect your next year's income to be. Uh, I, I realize that does change, so you can update that information uh, throughout the year uh, as needed. Um, but that's the only way for the IRS to check. Um, they're the ones checking the money. So when you give your expected income, if you qualify for the tax credit, you'll start using an advance throughout the year. And then when you file your taxes for that year, the IRS will compare what you said you were going to make when you applied with what you actually make. Um, and as long as those numbers are you know, about close enough, um, you'll be good to go. You can get set for next year's. Uh, now, what can happen, uh, for example, say you expect, um, I don't know, say 20,000 as your income for the year, and instead you make um, let's say 25,000. Well, if you don't go back and update that information, uh, your tax credit is based on a sliding scale. Generally, the lower you are without going below uh, that 100% threshold, which I'll get into what that number means here in a moment. Uh, but if you, don't, uh, if you end up making a little less, your tax credit will be larger. So if you actually report a higher income, um, you would have gotten more of a tax credit than you should have. You may have to pay some of it back um, the opposite can happen. If you say you're going to make, say, 25000 and instead you make twenty. well, at the end of the year, they're going to say, well, you should have gotten a larger tax credit. You'll just collect that lump sum uh, when you file your taxes. So either way, it balances out. But the only way for them to check is uh, for you to file your taxes, for them to be able to compare those numbers. Um, I mentioned uh, uh, or, or wanted to mention real briefly about uh, Medicaid and LACHIP. Uh, how we, since we did not expand uh, Medicaid, it does uh, affect us a little bit differently, meaning that for all intents and purposes, if anyone falls below a, cer a certain income threshold, uh, they will be directed to the Medicaid office. However, again, uh, how a person is determined eligible is still based on uh, that, that system hasn't really changed. So we keep that in mind. If uh, you do go through the process and are determined uh, eligible for Medicaid, uh, the marketplace can send your information uh, uh, to the Medicaid office. Uh, it, it will do that automatically or if you request it to do so. Um, so that can save a little time as well.
So now, I mentioned the federal poverty guidelines. These are the numbers. Uh, they change a little bit every year. Uh, they adjust up a little bit for cost of living. This is, these are the numbers that the federal government uses to determine whether or not an individual, for our purposes, qualifies for a tax credit uh, to help pay for private insurance through the marketplace. So I mentioned before, if your income falls in between 100 and 400 percent on this chart, uh, you would qualify for a tax credit. So you would look at what your household size is, which again, for most individuals, this will be your, your taxable, your tax household size. Uh, so, so whoever's filing the taxes plus uh, maybe their spouse and then dependents. Um, there are a few exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, that's what you would go by. Uh, and once you pick whatever your household size is, you look at the income between 100 and 400%. So for example, uh, take a household of four. If the household income, uh, again, uh, modified adjusted gross income, which is going to be uh, adjusted gross income in addition to um, for example, some non-taxed income, uh, Social Security and Social Security disability are, are two of the main ones. You would count in addition to whatever else you have to determine whether or not you qualify for assistance. Uh, but we'll, we'll again, we'll use household size of four. If the income falls in between 23,850 up to 95,400 for that household, uh, they'll qualify for a tax credit. Um, now, again, it works on a sliding scale, so the lower you are on the chart without going below 100%, the larger of a tax credit you will qualify for, uh, in addition uh, to the cost sharing reduction that I mentioned. Uh, the higher you are on the chart without going above, uh, you still qualify for a tax credit, but it will be, you know, will be smaller. Um, and again, the income can be updated throughout the year if there are any significant changes. Uh, so this is what they will use. Again, I mentioned it will vary uh, year to year. It should, for example, go up a little bit for next year and the year after. Uh, so this is a good, uh, good start for anyone trying to, trying to figure out if this is something they would be interested in. Uh, you'd be able to get an idea based off of these numbers whether or not you qualify for any assistance. So what I'm going to do now is mention the insurance providers available through the marketplace. Uh, they are all private insurance companies. Uh, many individuals are probably familiar with them, meaning that the ones listed here, uh, if you qualify for a tax credit when you are looking at different pr uh, plans and prices, uh, these are the, the providers that you'll be looking at. You'll be looking at plans provided by them. Uh, all of their plans are broken up into different tiers uh, in the marketplace, bronze, silver, gold, and platinum. Uh, all, they all that really means is that you can compare the different plans without having, um, having too much difficulty in regards to what benefits are covered. So for example, under the Act, all of the uh, benefits have to be uh, not so much the same, but they have to meet uh, a minimum requirement. They have to cover a certain amount of things. Uh, Ten essential health benefits are what they, called. Uh, they are called. I will go over them all here shortly. Um, but for right now, take a bronze plan. Compared to the rest of them, they're going to, uh, any plan in the bronze tier will call, uh, cost comparatively less, a month. Now when you go to use your insurance, it will be higher. You will be a higher deductible, higher out-of-pocket costs. Um, that's the trade-off. Now as you go down the list, the more precious the metal, the lower the monthly premium, but the higher the out-of-pocket cost. So for example, once you get to platinum, a platinum level plan is going to have comparatively a higher monthly premium, uh, but lower out-of-pocket costs. So lower deductible, um, lower uh, copay, for example, for a doctor's visit. Um, now I mentioned the cost sharing reduction just a moment ago and that it only applied to a certain selection of plans. If you qualify for the tax credit, you can apply it to any of the plans. The cost sharing reduction, which an individual uh, or their household can qualify for both, will only apply to the silver level uh, of plans, so any plan that would fall within that tier. Meaning that th instead of having, say, if you qualify for the cost sharing reduction and you're looking at a silver level plan, instead of having, say, use it for an example, a $2,000 deductible, um, what it would normally be, your cost sharing reduction may make it to where you only have to pay uh, $1,000 uh, towards your deductible and then it's considered met, or, or, or 500. Again, it, it varies based on your income and it works on a sliding scale, much like the tax credit. Uh, just keep in mind the cost sharing reduction can only be applied to any plan in the silver level tier, and again, that's if you qualify for it. So I mentioned the, the minimum requirements that all the plans have to cover under the Act. Uh, they're called the essential health benefits. Uh, these 10 items, it's designed to be uh, relatively comprehensive. Um, Ambulatory patient services, uh, prescription drug coverage, emergency services, that would also include transportation. Uh, uh, rehabilitative services would um, uh, include any, for example, equipment uh, that you may need for, for any sort of physical rehabilitation. Uh, inpatient hospitalization, uh, lab work, uh, 
uh, maternity, newborn care. Again, uh, preventative uh, and wellness is listed and anything that falls under preventative, you will not pay anything out of pocket for. Uh, chronic disease management, uh, which would again include any equipment you would need for that. Uh, mental health and substance abuse disorder services. And then pediatric services, including oral and vision. Uh, dental and vision are required uh, uh, for, for children. However, it's optional for adults. So some of the plans in the marketplace may have some minor vision or dental coverage. Uh, however, they are not required to. Uh, so in that case, you may end up with a plan uh, that you choose through the marketplace in addition to a separate, uh, say, dental or vision plan. So. I'm going to go real quick over the application process. Uh, after you would apply for the tax credit for the assistance uh, or the cost sharing reduction, again, you can apply to see if you qualify for both, uh, you would be able to filter and determine the different plans, compare them kind of side by side, apples to apples. Uh, in addition to trying to see if you qualify for any assistance, uh, like I mentioned before, you can have your information sent to the Medicaid office uh, or for your children you can have it sent to the uh, LACHIP office. It'll do that automatically for you or if you request it. Uh, you can go through this entire process uh, electronically online uh, through their website. You can also submit a paper application, but keep in mind uh, go going through the online application process uh, is going to be faster. Uh, the uh, paper application process will, will still work, but it will, will take a little bit longer. Um, the website, www.healthcare.gov, um, this is the secured site where you would go to compare different plans and prices uh, and to apply. If you wanted to enroll over the phone, 1-800-318-2596. Uh, this is the marketplace number. You can call 24-7. Uh, you will be able to speak with someone. Uh, if you want to go through the entire application process over the phone, you can do that as well. So after you enroll, you do have the option of, uh, of well, if you disagree. Um, and if you disagree, there is an appeals process. Uh, generally, I said disagree, meaning um, th there's some uh, issue with how your income was reported or your, your tax credit doesn't seem to reflect what your income uh, will be, um, or, or maybe you moved and they don't have your correct address. If, there, if there's something incorrect um, and, and you can't change it manually on the site, uh, you, you can contact to uh, request an appeal. Uh, initially, there'll be an informal uh, resolution uh, attempted that'll be most likely over the phone. Someone from the marketplace will contact you uh, and try to address the issue. If it is more serious than that, uh, they will schedule a formal hearing. Uh, now, regardless, after the hearing is scheduled and the decision is concluded, the matter will be closed. Um, but this is an additional avenue uh, uh, to provide any sort of assistance if you're having, uh, if you're needing some sort of appeal based on the information that you've uh, entered or your eligibility determination uh, that you would receive after you have uh, applied for the uh, for the assistance. So what if I choose, what if I just don't want to mess with any of this? What if I choose not to have a healthcare plan for one reason or another? Um, first, there are two options primarily. Uh, I will mention the, the, the fees uh, that an individual or their household will have to pay. But after that, I am going to mention uh, there are a handful of ways to be exempt. Um, under the act, uh, there's what's called the personal responsibility requirement, meaning that uh, basically, an individual must have some sort of health coverage uh, or pay some sort of penalty. That's usually the part that everyone knows. A lot of the times what they don't hear is that there are exemptions to that requirement, meaning that if you qualify for an exemption, you do not have to pay a penalty and you will not have to uh, get health insurance otherwise. Uh, so for 2015, we'll start with the penalty. It is the higher of either of these two amounts, either 2% of your yearly household income and the maximum penalty under this, there is a cap, is the national average premium for a bronze plan. Um, or, again, if this, uh, the next one is higher, $325 per person for the year, uh, half the amount for children under the age of 18. The maximum penalty uh, per family using this method is $975. Now, these numbers are, again, for 2015. As far as uh, your, your taxes go, they will uh, go up for 2016. I do know that. Um, now, again, there are the options of having some sort of coverage or paying some sort of penalty. And now I'm going to go over the exemptions, uh, which are, again, ways to, uh, if you qualify for an exemption, you will not be penalized uh, for not having health coverage. Uh, there are a variety of different ways to qualify for an exemption. Exemptions are granted either through the marketplace uh, directly or through the IRS. Um, I'll mention, uh, go through them kind of one by one. 
Um, if you are a member of a recognized religious sect, if you're a member of a federally recognized tribe, if you're incarcerated, or a member of a healthcare sharing ministry, again, you, uh, if you choose to be, uh, you can be exempt from that requirement to have health insurance or pay some sort of penalty. Uh, now I'm gonna spend a little bit of more time talking about what's called a hardship exemption. Um, this is basically an individual or their household requesting an exemption due to um, uh, the, uh, some sort of uh, economic issues or personal hardship. Um, and this is done more on a case-by-case -case basis because there are, there are a variety of different ways an individual can, can become uh, exempt based on hardship. So for example, um, if you have a, some sort of shut off notice from a, from a utility company or if you're recently evicted, um, natural disaster, for example, if your property is damaged and you're more concerned, you, you have different priorities for that month, maybe just one month, uh, you can get an exemption just for that time. Uh, if you have a relative who's ill who moves in with you, you're not responsible for taking care of them. Um, your costs have gone up uh, as far as what income you have. Um, th these are all, it's not an exhaustive list, but these are all examples. Um, basically you're saying, I, uh, either way I can't afford this, uh, I need to be exempt and there's an application process for that. And these are all granted through the marketplace. Uh, so you would again either go over the phone or go th uh, to their website in, in order to, to uh, access one of these exemptions or to apply for one. Um, in addition to exemptions granted through the marketplace, the IRS will also grant them directly. Uh, most of them they will provide the same exemptions. Uh, however, they, they also also um, provide what's called a short coverage gap, uh, meaning that if you have a lack of coverage for less than uh, three consecutive months, you don't even have to provide any documentation. So for example, you're moving, uh, you, you, you change to a different state, you're, you have a gap when you're just getting new coverage, for example, maybe, uh, you will be penalized for that. Um, in addition to that, if you are uh, actually below the tax uh, filing threshold, uh, you don't even have to apply for an exemption. You're automatically exempt. Um, so, so a lot of times, uh, individuals who are the most concerned about the penalty uh, will be exempt from it. Uh, but, but keep in mind, you do have to, uh, depending on your situation, you may actually have to apply for the exemption. So the websites to visit, if you want to know uh, more information than what I've provided, uh, you can go to uh, healthcare.gov. Uh, marketplace.cms.gov is a good uh, resource for information, uh, handout material. Uh, our state website, lahealthcarenav.org, if you need to request some one-on-one -on -one assistance or maybe just ask a question or two to someone in person. Um, now, I, I briefed over these. These are all uh, uh, secure websites, uh, websites where you can go to get accurate, up-to-date information. Uh, I, I do uh, warn people that there are fraudulent websites. There are, there are uh, locations that you can go to um, that, that may not have accurate and up-to-date information. Uh, so if you want to make sure that the information you get is correct, um, go to one of these three sites depending on, on your need. Uh, now again, keep in mind if you're wanting to enroll, uh, that is primary, that is all exclusively through healthcare.gov. So I'm going to walk through the end-to-end -end, uh, process. Uh, beginning to end what you would do if you're wanting to enroll. Uh, it's all done uh, online, at least initially. After it's set up online, if, if computers aren't your thing, you can opt to have everything done through the mail uh, where you'll be mailed information. Uh, however, initially you, you would need to create an account on uh, healthcare.gov. Uh, after verifying, you would answer a few questions, verify your identity through the secure website. Uh, you would submit your application. You would give your household size, income, that sort of thing. Um, and they would respond to you with your eligibility determination, meaning they would say whether or not you qualify for any sort of assistance and then how much. Um, if you have any disagreement with that, that's when you would uh, file an appeal uh, if you needed to. Uh, once you've received your determination, it's generally instantaneous through the website. Uh, the whole process up to this point would probably take half hour, maybe an hour at most. Um, then you would instantly get your determination, which would again tell you how much you would qualify for if you do. Uh, then after that, you would you would set how much of your tax credit you wanted to use. Um, I know it can be difficult for households to estimate their next year's income. Uh, some individuals that's very easy, some individuals that will vary quite a bit. Uh, so what you can do is give an estimate and then based on that amount, uh, whatever you qualify for, uh, say the tax credit is, is $200 a month, I'll use that one again. You don't have to use all of it. You can, you can say I want to use $100 of it, apply 100 
to whatever plans I'm looking at, reduce the premium by that amount, and then what is ever, whatever is left at the end of the year, when the IRS compares what you said you were gonna make to what you made, if you were off a little bit and you were, instead of having to pay it back, they'll just take from whatever you left and then if you were supposed to get that and maybe more, in that case, you would just collect the entire lump sum. So either way, uh, you get it. Just that's one way uh, to, to go about without having to, you know, the goal is to not pay anything back, the goal is to give a good, honest estimate. Um, to the best of your ability. Uh, but after that is all sorted, you've determined whether or not you qualify for assistance, let's say you do, uh, you'd be looking at plans. You'd be comparing different plans and prices from different insurance providers. The website will do the math for you. Um, it'll tell you what the total cost of the plan is, minus whatever you qualify for if you do. Um, and it will give you all the plan information. If you have any further questions, it will have the contact information for the insurance provider. Um, but other than that, you will be able to compare and see all, all, all of their options, uh, what the plans cover, whether or not they're in and out of network, what sort of plans there are. Uh, if there are specific medications that you need, you can sort by, uh, you, you can view the different formularies from the providers. Uh, if you need a specific physician, you can view the provider directory. All, of these, uh, all this information uh, under the Act is made available through the insurance providers. Uh, so say you get to this point, you do find a plan you like, uh, the next step's pretty simple. You would just, since you're online, you would click to enroll. Um, it'll ask you to verify a couple of times and you would continue. Once you've submitted, uh, once you, you've finished that step, uh, you're done. You're just, you're just waiting within uh, three to seven business days, I'd say that at the most, uh, the insurance company that you choose, if you choose one, will contact you uh, to set up the first month's premium payment. And then Within a week or so after that, uh, just like with any other, you know, if you were to go even before all of this, they'll send you your packet in the mail. So they'll send you your provider directory, uh, your, your overall policy summary, um, your insurance cards. Um, again, because you have private insurance, uh, you, you'll be set as far as that goes. And then if you need to make any changes throughout the year, uh, you can. You can either log on to the website, uh, you can contact an assister, uh, either a certified application counselor or a navigator like myself. We can assist you with those changes. Um, or you can do it yourself, you can just log into the website. Um, other than that, if you don't need to make any changes, you will wait throughout the year, and when the new year starts again, you will either um, view what your new tax credit will be. Uh, if, you, if that amount is set, you will continue and will go into the next year. Uh, you can make any changes, though, throughout the process. Okay, so main points to remember is you still have uh, choices. Any employer-sponsored coverage uh, uh, will continue. Uh, and remember, in most cases, if you qualify uh, or if you are eligible for employer-sponsored coverage, generally you don't qualify for any sort of uh, assistance in the marketplace because in most, in most cases, the reasoning behind it is that the employer is going to be paying a portion of your, your costs. Um, now, again, if that's not the case, if they don't meet those requirements I mentioned earlier, you can qualify for assistance through the marketplace. Uh, insurance will continue to be sold outside of the marketplace, so you don't have to get it through the health insurance marketplace. However, if you want to uh, see if you qualify for any assistance, uh, you have to enroll. So again, in order to qualify for either the T uh, advanced premium tax credit uh, or any of the cost sharing reductions, uh, you have to go through uh, the health insurance marketplace. All right, thank you uh, for listening. And again, if you have any other questions, please contact the information above. Main thing to keep in mind is to be informed. Uh, there's a lot of misinformation uh, or a lot of lack of information. Uh, so before anyone makes any decisions, uh, just make sure you're seeking uh, assistance uh, through the proper channels and uh, to stay informed. How much available information is free to the public? Uh, well, all, all information we provide is free to the public, uh, as well as any uh, information provided through the healthcare.gov website. I think the most important thing to know is that there are resources in all of the communities across Louisiana to help you with enrollment process, whether or not it is just understanding some of the things we explained today, or if it is actual help with the enrollment. There are navigators and certified application counselors, as well as insurance agents and brokers in your community that will be able to help you. If people have questions like more information, what should they do? I think the easiest way is to call us at our office, and that's calling 1-800-435-AHEC for AHEC or 1-800-435-2432. And what we'll do is we'll connect you with an insurance assister right there in your community.